morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, come on in, come on in. This is Pastor Dale Fontenot. Hope you can hear me in the shadows of the prayer garden here at the Ministry and Retreat Center in, uh, in Palmetto. Uh, kind of a long story of why I'm here, uh, but we're after uh, the Sunday after Hurricane, which hurricane is this? Delta <laughs> came through and uh, did some damage. I don't know, maybe you can see some of the limbs uh, down behind me. And uh, even over here to my right is normally where we have our driving services. Um, again, some of the shade trees that we've used for parking. Uh, top of that has come down on the basketball courts behind there. A large tree fell on the court. Nothing hit a building. And uh, we're grateful for that. But again, buildings can be replaced as uh, we're seeing and we're understanding even as we move. Uh, through the season, our neighbors to the west, the Lake Charles area, uh, hit again, and um, that's, um, that's tough, but we're going to continue to support them. Here in St. Landry Parish, we got just a, a little bit of taste. Uh, a lot of the power is out. Power is out at my home. That's why I'm here at uh, the retreat center, and um, just so grateful to God. It's a beautiful morning, even in the shadows. Uh, but even with the shadows, I pray that the word uh, may be with you in a strong manner, in a strong way. So grateful that you're tuned in again today as uh, we are here, New Life Church of God. And uh, what a privilege, what a pleasure it is to, to be with you on this morning. We take nothing for granted. Maybe that those of you who are taking a break for, from picking up limbs and uh, picking up branches and kind of cleaning your yard, I know some of you have some other work you need to be doing. Others of you, you don't even have power. And um, if you're watching, oh, praise be to God. So if you can maybe type into your comment box or even text me directly uh, in regards to what your situation is today, what, what shape you're in. Um, this may be definitely an online New Life community uh, today. But whatever it is, uh, just kind of type in, if you will, or text me to see if everything is okay. If you have electricity uh, or not, uh, if you let me know. Uh, if you don't and you're watching, boy, that's that's really great. I still have low bandwidth even in my home in Opelousas, and so just decided to come out to the grounds today and uh, just to give a, a message today of encouragement. This is our um, house to house series message, and even as we move forward with that. We're just understanding that God is a mighty God indeed, and uh, he's still with us. It may be a difficult season for you, difficult time today, uh, but we want to find those things that we are eternally grateful for today. Let's have a word of prayer today as we begin to get into God's word. Let's pray together. Father, we give you thanks and praise for who you are, how wonderful you are indeed, Lord God, and we bless you. Father, I thank you for those that are tuned in today. Father, some are gathered with hearts that are aching, some that are gathered in a sense that we have to put the pieces back together again. But I say thank you that you are right here with us. And uh, we're learning to rejoice. We're learning that you inhabit the praises of your people. So we praise your name today. You are worthy to be praised. We pray one for another today. I thank you, Lord God, for those that are trying to put back the pieces from Hurricane Delta, for those that are supporting one another. We're just eternally grateful that you are concerned about us all, and we ask for divine favor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Well, this is uh, House to House Sunday. As we alternate uh, Sundays, uh, last Sunday we were out here to my right in our drive-in location and Minister David Tanner gave us a wonderful uh, message and uh, we're going to keep on trusting God. Today I want to take you back into our original text of scripture uh, that started this House to House series several weeks ago as it spoke in regards to what was going on and uh, uh, that word even said that the apostles 
the followers of Jesus Christ went in the temple courts and they went from house to house proclaiming and teaching the good news about Jesus, that Jesus is the Messiah. And so we recognize that, Acts 5, 42. And uh, as we hone in on the importance of uh, what goes on in our homes, we welcome you again to this New Life community. 2020 has thrown a lot at us as it has thrown a lot at you. And uh, as I said earlier, today we've come from the Ministry and Retreat Center's prayer garden. I'm gathered here uh, in the prayer garden. As I mentioned, I, I still have no electricity uh, at my home, and uh, the cellular data is stronger here at the Retreat Center, believe it or not, than at my house church. So I have to bring my house church outside today. And uh, if you're able to join in at your house for the Word of God, be eternally grateful. We take so many things for granted, but God is still good. So one thing that we've learned during this pandemic that has spanned uh, over seven months, one thing that we have learned at New Life is that the church is not a place. Hear me. The church is not a place. Rather, we've learned that the church is a journey and we uh, gather those that uh, hear the message of the good news to journey on with us as we travel the ups and the downs, the twists and the turns of life. Church is not a building, but it's a journey. And we welcome one another to join in together uh, even with this tribe, with the New Life tribe, whether you are the New Life tribe proper or you the New Life tribe online, uh, we invite you to join together in this destination called life. That's what we've learned and we've taken so much for granted before 2020, before this pandemic. And as followers of Jesus Christ, we understand that the road that we've been given uh, uh, it's, it's difficult, and uh, there are those who have experienced great difficulties, and we're here to support one another on this journey. We're not here to point fingers of blame, but we're here pointing towards Jesus Christ. He is the one. This house to house, this H2H is about Jesus, is all Jesus. And Jesus becomes our destination as he's with us even on our journey. How you like that? That's a wonderful thing to know Jesus and to look to him. And so we've learned that we're on a journey. And here in this great country, in the United States of America, probably we've had it too easily. We have taken for granted um, communities of faith. We have taken for granted religious freedom. We've taken for granted so much that's going on around us. Um, and we look to claim all of our rights. We look to the government. You can't take our rights away from us. Uh, we have rights. In America, we've had it too easy as the body of Christ. And we need to understand what's going on. We need to hear what the Lord is saying, what the Lord is doing for us. And so here at New Life Church, New Life is really wherever you are. That's the church, understand that. And so here at New Life, we have been making church anywhere and everywhere we have needed to. And so we've come to an understanding that we can make church outside, we can make it in a prayer garden, we can make it in our homes, we can make it uh, in our cars, wherever we are, we can make church. And so that's the beautiful part is we understand even new life is not about a denomination. It's not about an earthly organization necessarily. There's one church and one Lord and one Savior. And we understand that. And it's just a wonderful thing to be a part of the body of Christ, to do the work of the kingdom, even in 2020. And so we are understanding more and more of what God is doing. And so we do look for ways that we can connect in times like these, ways that we can um, 
uh, 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 come together. Remember, the early church didn't have a church building and property in which they can could gather. They would go house to house. They would gather outside in the temple colonnade and uh, preach the word of God and they would worship the Lord. And so we have to understand the very essence as we drill down to what the church is all about indeed. And so we look for ways to connect even in these times of difficulty and challenge. And we're learning how to do that with some ease. We're learning how to do that uh, in a way that will give God the glory through it all. So we look for ways to connect and we look for ways to fulfill our mission. Our mission is to see that there is transformation of lives, transformation of communities, and transformation of the culture the accepted behavior patterns in our world. And so everything that we do, it must go through that filter. Uh, whatever programs, whatever celebrations, whatever uh, organizations we have, whatever we do as a church, it must go through that filter of, of calling forth the new life, calling forth transformation of lives and to work towards seeing our communities transformed and addressing the accepted behavior the accepted culture of our day. And so we can't lose our mission in order to do the church things. And there must be a purpose behind all that we do and all that we are working towards. Friends, we recognize that our area has been ravaged during 2020. It's been ravaged during the pandemic. We recognize that in addition to all the things that we are dealing with with COVID-19 and uh, how that has affected health, how that has affected accepted behavior patterns, how that has kind of changed some things that are, are going around. Uh, in addition to COVID-19, there have been the issues with the education of our kids during this challenging times. Um, uh, our schools were dismissed last March, March for the year, and it's been a struggle to, to, to get schools started online and uh, in, in person. It's been a struggle. It's been a challenge. And then you throw in the socioeconomic inadequacies of our area in response to these things. And then we have seen People choose to settle their differences and anger in ways that take lives and break homes and destroy so much of family because we have not gotten the skills necessary to settle our disagreements. We weep with those who weep today and who have been weeping throughout 2020 in the places that we live, in the communities in which we live. So much that we've had to deal with and then you top on that the spiking of addictions as people express their hurts and not knowing the source of healing and wholeness that's found, that's found in Jesus Christ. And addictions have spiked as people are looking for a drug that will take them to a higher level and a higher plane to deal with brokenness in heart, brokenness in life structures. Yes, yes, 2020 has been challenging indeed. We can't drink away our problems. We can't drink away our griefs. And so all the more the church, the body of Christ, finds the reality that in times like these, it's times for the church to arise. It's not a necessarily an opportunity for the church, but it's the responsibility of the church to be there for our communities, to be there for our students, to be there for our families. It's the church's responsibility. Oh, we can easily gripe and complain. How come people won't come through our doors? How come people won't come to church in times like these? Well, listen, it's our responsibility to get out of the doors of our church now and impact the communities and the families that we are a part of. And so, yes, the doors of the church are open, 
for the church to go outside, for the church to touch the community, for the church to be a vibrant part of society and not gathered into such a judgmental state that all we can do is to point to the wicked that are outside the doors of the church. Yeah, I know uh, COVID-19 has helped us to point the fingers, fingers to the wickedness inside the doors of the church. That's why we throwing all of y'all out. Me too because we are desiring to be more and more like Christ. Let the church say amen. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. And so we recognize that it's been a difficult time. People are hurting. Our minds, our thoughts are hurting. Emotions are hurting. Life events cause us to hurt. It's hard, but as I see it, the solution lies with the presence, the reality of Jesus Christ found in our homes. Right there. The basics that are there the solution, the needed skills to address what's going on, it must come from our house churches. Our house churches must arise in times like these. It's time for us to take responsibility in our homes and arise and fulfill the calling that the Lord has for us. And we must spread Jesus and his way from house to house. When I can get my house in order, when I can get my house to love Jesus and to serve him, uh, then if I can get back in my house, then it's to your house and your neighbor's house. And I just want you to see the spreading of the good news of the way of Jesus Christ from house to house that we can see real significant change and transformation in our world and in the places that we live. In the text of scripture that we have been emphasizing during this time of house to house of H28, that, that fifth chapter of uh, the book of Acts, when we look at that text of scripture, we notice that the followers of Christ, the apostles, are being crucified, are being persecuted. Let me put it like that. They're being persecuted for representing Jesus and for speaking the word of Jesus. The apostles had been performing many miracles and many signs and wonders. And there were multitudes of people that were accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, as the message of Jesus was being proclaimed. We see this going on in the fifth chapter of the book of Acts. And um, the, the Sadducees, one of the, the, the sects, one of the, the religious uh, lead the religious leaders of that day. The scripture says they became jealous because people started following the, the apostles. They started following the message of Jesus Christ. And so the Sadducees became jealous and they threw the apostles in jail. And the apostles went to jail and during the late night hours, the watch, one of the late night hours watch, the angel of the Lord came and freed them from jail and the angel gave them an assignment and their assignment was to go tell people about this new life go tell people about the new life that's found in Jesus Christ go and tell the people and lo and behold that's exactly what the Apostles did they went and they told people about Jesus Christ and uh, guess what that's it the Sadducees had the apostles arrested all over again and they were brought in and they were questioned. And even as they were questioned, uh, Gamil, Gamiel uh, said that, listen, look, if this is of God, we can't stop it. So let's not even uh, go that particular way. And so the apostles were freed. And uh, that's when we run into our text of scripture, that 42nd verse that they went from from temple courts and from house to house, proclaiming and teaching the good news about Jesus Christ. And the apostles also counted themselves worthy to have been persecuted for the sake of Christ. Scripture says they were worthy. They were, they had, they were celebrating because they had been counted worthy of suffering, disgrace in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And here it is, we can't take few challenges uh, from our health officials and our government officials. And here the apostles were excited just to go to jail. Oh, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And so friends, this is what we're doing in the year 2020. 
This is the second Sunday of the month of October as we're here uh, in the remains of Hurricane Delta. And uh, as we look at 2020, we have to continue to proclaim and to teach the good news about Jesus Christ from house to house. As your house has electricity, you proclaim the good news about Jesus Christ to the next house, that it can have electricity, or, have, or how we say it around here, uh, we have power. And so as we have power, we proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to the next house so that they can have power, so that the next house can have power. And from house to house, we all have power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this is what we're doing in 2020. We're not going to be so despondent. We're not going to be so uh, callous and just rush this away. God is in the midst of speaking. God is in the midst of doing something. And so... We need your house to be excited about Jesus. Bottom line, we need your house to be excited about Jesus. Your house, not just you, but those others who live in your house. We need them to be excited about Jesus. Yes, that's what we're calling. That's where we're going in the midst of all of this. We need our houses and those who live in our homes to be excited about Jesus. We need your house to teach and to model the Jesus way. Yes, to be excited, but teach the Jesus way. Model the Jesus lifestyle. Understand that there's a great cultural war that's going on today. Everything is centered around people and not centered around Jesus Christ. Centered around what people want, what we feel we deserve, what my rights may be. And the culture is not centered around Jesus. Everything is being centered around the American culture, about prosperity and about the American way of life and about the American values of the flag, the American values of this and work and money and bank accounts. And it's not centered around Jesus. So when we talk about transforming culture, we're speaking into the culture, the acceptable behavior patterns. I'm going to get what I'm going to get. And if I got to walk over you to get it, I'm going to get it. See, that's that cultural pattern that we're looking to break. And so we can understand that uh, we have to build our lives and our homes around biblical truth and not just around American culture. American culture is based on whatever is popular. Who has the popular vote? Who, who scored the highest on this questionnaire? This is how families should look because we vote on it in America. Listen. With the very foundation and the principles of our society that's founded in the family, it is God that has ordained the family and not the American culture. The American culture uh, gets in trouble when it defines the family apart to how God is defining the family. We recognize that unbiblical beliefs are being lived out even in regards to the family, in regards to marriage, in regards to cohabitating. We can understand that God has a design for the family. And when the family breaks down, our society breaks down. And so we're here not just to point the fingers of blame as what's going on, but we're here to offer answers. We're here to take responsibility. We're here to fulfill our task in building the family, in strengthening the family, because it's the foundation for our society. We have to recognize that we have to learn how to treat one another. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Knowing how to treat one another, knowing how to deal with our anger, and knowing how to deal with all of those frustrations in our lives. Listen, this American way is getting us into a lot of trouble. And let me tell you something. God is not winking at sin. God is not winking at sin. We may vote sin in, but God is not winking at it. 
And so we're here to point you to Jesus, to point you to a more excellent way, to lift up biblical truths that we can build our lives around, that we can shape our lives with. We understand that. And so we gather wherever you are, we're gathering. You're part of the gathered uh, community, the gathered faith community today. So wherever you are, uh, we want to point the way to Jesus. He's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. And there's no better way to live than to live the Jesus way. We have to find the Jesus way. We have to learn the Jesus way. We have to come to the Jesus way. And we can understand that there's no better way to live. There's no better way to solve the problems of our area than Jesus Christ. Even as we own the problems of our area, we still have to lift up Jesus to solve the problems of our lives. Understand, Jesus can restore order back into our homes. Jesus can restore order back into our families. He can do it when we are committed to him, when we have a show a resolve to honor him, to serve him, to learn about his way, Jesus can restore order back into our families. Jesus can restore order back into our young men. He can give our young men ways to settle their differences. He can show our young men how they have been called to lead in our area and not point our area to more gloom and to more doom. But God wants to elevate our young black males to portions, to places of leadership, of responsibility, as God has ordained for them. Jesus is the way. He's able to do that as we would commit our way as communities towards Jesus Christ, towards living his way, our homes towards living for him. Oh, yes, Jesus can restore order back into the education aspects of our kids. He can do that. He can restore order there. He can restore order in our interacting with one another, in our interacting with enemies and those who don't like us and we may not like them. Jesus can restore order to all of that. It's all Jesus. That's the vision that we're lifting up. That's the teaching that we're highlighting today, that it is Jesus that can restore the order of the day. And so, friends, I'm excited about Jesus. I'm excited about who he is. And I just want you to, to, to accept him into your life. I'm excited about the potential of you accepting him into your family and to those that have turned to death ear. Again, we are so spoiled here in America that we take for granted the body of Christ. We take for granted the wonderful teachings and the lifestyles of Jesus Christ and we just move on and blow it off. But I'm excited and just want you to allow Jesus Christ into your family, into your neighborhood. Again, it, it only takes a spark to get a fire going. We're trying to set up sparks, set off sparks in and around our area and beyond as far as the message will go. Don't become so disheartened that you don't think it's possible. Let's be followers of Jesus Christ and followers of his way. Let's not live our lives a certain way because everybody is doing it. Everybody is doing that way. Be strong and of a good courage that you can arise in days like this, in times like this, not being discouraged, but understanding we're taking responsibility for the world around us, for our family around us. The way of Jesus Christ really pays off. It gives us peace in the midst of a storm. It gives us peace in the midst of no electricity. It gives us joy. We don't have to turn up a bottle. We don't have to hit a joint to feel the peace and the joy. We can come outside in a prayer garden. We can come outside in the garden. We can come outside on a beautiful day like today. And just to celebrate Jesus, so in love with Jesus and recognizing who he is in our lives. Let's be followers of Jesus Christ. Let's not take his teachings as suggestions, 
but let's take his teachings as the way that we are to live. Let's stop all the hatred in our families, the hatred in our neighborhoods, the hatred that people have against others. Let's stop all of the hatred. Let's stop all of the abuse that's going on, abuse in families, abuse among spouses, abuse of children, human sex trafficking. Let's stop all of that abuse. Let's stop all the unrighteousness. Let's live for Jesus Christ. Let's fall for him more and more in our lives. Let's stop all of the hatred and unrighteousness. Just look around at where it's gotten us in 2020. Ah, there's a brighter day that we proclaim unto you today. And so as we just allow Jesus Christ to do more and more in our lives, I want to pray with you today as I welcome you to be followers of Jesus Christ, to fall in love with him and allow your lives to measure up. Allow this tongue to measure up to what Jesus is saying. Our tongue in response, in our anger, let it honor the Lord. Come on, let's be followers of Jesus Christ. I know you can't do it on your own. That's why he sends his Holy Spirit. That's why there's a wonderful power in salvation. He can help us to become new, to become brand new. The old is passing away. Behold, all things are becoming new. My attitude is becoming new. My lifestyle is becoming new. I'm putting aside all of that hatred and anger and bitterness. And I'm opening my heart to the love of Jesus that he can soothe my heart's hurts. He can help my wounds. That's what Jesus can do as we love on him, as we follow him. May the Lord bless you. I want to pray with you today. If you're someone that's giving your life to Jesus Christ, let us know. I accepted Jesus today. This new way of life, it's mine. I'm going to be a follower of Jesus. I am going to follow him no matter what my friends or family may say. You won't regret it, friends. What do we have to lose? Look at 2020. What has that gotten us? Come on, we can gain so much more in Jesus Christ. Come join us on this journey. This journey comes sometimes with heartache, sometimes with heartbreak. But when we have a a, a family, a community of faith to undergird us, we can make it. We can make it. I want to pray with you today. And I believe that the Lord is going to do a, fr a fresh work in all of our hearts, in our lives today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for an opportunity to call on your name. Lord Jesus, we're following you today because we've heard your word today. Father, I thank you for those that, even in the midst of their pain, the pain of life, they're saying yes to you, Jesus. They're allowing your love to come into their hearts. I thank you, Lord Jesus. And Father, that that you are doing in all of our lives, continue to do this new work, this new thing in our hearts. Father, we're all standing in the need of prayer. We're all standing in the need of a greater strength and a greater power. Fill your people with the power of the Holy Ghost, enabling us to remain faithful when the whole world is going a different way. For those that are receiving and accepting you, Jesus, I thank you that heaven is rejoicing today. I thank you, Jesus, for making that person new. And we celebrate it. Now, Father, may our homes, may our house churches be positioned in a way that will honor you and to be a spark for our neighborhood, a spark from our area, that we can take it from house to house to house. Thank you for hearing our prayer today. And we look to you and we need your blessings as we love you more and more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Let the church say amen.
All right, all right. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. All right, all right, all right. Amen, 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 amen. Be strengthened, be blessed, be encouraged, even as we continue to put new steps in front of old steps. Keep taking it one step at a time. We're praying for you. For those of you who have some more cleaning up to do, those of you that uh, have to see insurance adjusters and the like, the Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. Uh, we, we're counting our blessings even as we move forward. And so to the greater New Life community, I express my appreciation and my love to you. Thank you for allowing me just to speak into your life on today, to speak into your future. May the Lord be blessed. May the Lord uh, receive our praise, receive our thanksgiving, even as we move forward from this moment on. Again, this has been our house to house day. Next Sunday, we'll have another drive in service. You are welcome to come and to attend our drive in service on the third Sunday uh, in the month of October. Lord willing, as we move forward in all that we do, in a sense of it's all about the Lord willing indeed. And so we're going to release you, let you go. Some of you got some work to do. Others of you just enjoy the afternoon. If the Lord has favored you and blessed you, enjoy family, appreciate one another. And uh, we'll join together here in the parking lot just for a few more moments speaking to one another. So glad all of you in. I see we have folks in from Washington. Washington, to my understanding, has no electricity. And uh, most of Palmetto has electricity, but not all parts of it. And uh, we're blessed, and we're going to make it through. And uh, I love you. I appreciate you so much. And until next Sunday, uh, we'll join in together. This Wednesday night, we'll come together. Uh, we're going to make our Zoom link available on Facebook as uh, we're going to uh, live stream our Zoom time on Wednesday on, at 6.30. So follow our New Life page for more information on that and to see what that is all about. So until next time, friends, be blessed, be strengthened. It's all Jesus in our lives. That's what we preach. That's what we live. Until next time, the Lord bless you. All right. your messages.
All right, praise the Lord. Until next time, next Sunday or Wednesday night, stay tuned. <laughs> the Lord bless you. All right.